Welcome to this short video on building stateful versus stateless applications. My name is Christopher Beatty and I work at Lightbend where I work on the ACA team full time. By the end of this video, you should have a good idea about the advantages of using a library such as ACA Cluster to build stateful applications rather than traditional stateless applications. First, let's have a look at what we mean by a stateless application. So in this diagram, we have application instances in the middle, and the way we route user traffic to them is via a load balancer. This architecture is referred to as stateless because the middle tier doesn't contain any application state. Everything is stored in the database. So every time a user requests come in, if any state is required, then we first need to go to the database, execute our business logic, and then potentially save something new in the database. This architecture has some significant benefits. It is exceptionally easy to deploy. It's also very easy to scale up and scale down and do rolling redeploys. However, it limits the choices for how we architect our application. We could have two consecutive requests and maybe the second request could be easily satisfied based on something computed in the first request, but we still have this overhead of going to the database. We've got no inter-app communication, so we can't store anything in memory and then access it from another instance of our application. And it can be quite hard to model certain domains this way. If all of our requests are completely isolated, then this architecture is great. But imagine building a chat application where you've got two active users and they need to communicate. In this architecture, the only choice is to go via a database. The last and possibly biggest downside is that We've made scaling our application instances extremely easy at the cost of needing to scale our database. Scaling the database is typically the hardest part of scaling any architecture. Imagine it's too slow to go to the database every time, or we've got some transient data that we want to ideally be able to access very quickly from memory. Often then we introduce another piece of technology say a distributed cache. This again pushes the hard parts into our infrastructure. And this isn't free from a development point of view. Every database queuing system, every distributed cache we build in has its own semantics and its own idiosyncrasies. And we have to learn and understand those to use them effectively. And if we're using this as a traditional cache where we're just storing data, which otherwise would be in the database, then we've got the problem of keeping these two things in sync. So to solve some of these problems about constantly hitting the database unnecessarily, then we start to cache things inside the application. So if we have a user session, which lasts for a number of requests, then we store information within the application node. This functionality is often built into many web frameworks where you can have some type of session store. The problem with this is that the session store is local to a node. So for this to be effective, the load balancer now has to route requests for the same user or for the same session, always to the same node. The second problem is that if soon as one of our nodes goes away, we suddenly lose the state for a certain set of users without some automated way of rebuilding that cache back up. And this only solves a small part of the problem, hitting the database too much. It doesn't help at all for domains where we want to model interaction between entities say users in a chat or an interactive game. So then is there a better architecture for stateful applications where we have the benefits of the load balancer being able to send requests to any of the application nodes, but the application nodes can work together, can store information in memory that's accessible from any application node. In this architecture, we still want to communicate with the database, but we can selectively choose when to do that and when to use functionality that's built directly into the application layer. For this to work, we need some type of routing. So the load balancer doesn't need to have any intelligence about where to send the message. Assuming that you have some tools to be able to build applications like that, it produces a great deal of flexibility. You can trade off between availability and consistency per feature. So certain features you might want to store the data on one node and route all requests there, which gives you a very consistent view of the data at the expense of availability. When that node gets turned off or crashes, then the data needs to be migrated and there might be some downtime. Instead, you might distribute data across multiple nodes. You might choose to replicate the data across all nodes or a subset of the nodes to be able to tune that 
it means that you can pick availability. Maybe that you only need to talk to two out of the three nodes to send a response to the user. With this type of architecture, you can decide when availability or consistency is more important for a feature. Anything we do directly with the database, often without even thinking about it, we're picking on the high consistency scale. And that's good because it's easy to reason about, but often we want large parts of our application to continue working, even if the database is non-responsive. So this will depend on your domain, but for your application, you might decide that getting the current contents of, the, of a shopping basket shouldn't need to go to the database because we, we want the contents of the shopping basket to be available even if our database is down and maybe half of our nodes are down. Maybe even functionality like adding to a basket. Maybe it accidentally gets lost, maybe it doesn't, but not being available likely means that your customer will go to a different site. But then maybe when we go to features like checking out or the initial authentication, that's where we might want to pick consistency. All of this sounds great, but what do we actually need to build this type of smarts into our application layer? So that's where a technology like Acacosta comes into play. And the first thing we need if we're going to build this type of functionality into our application layer is the concept of membership. We need nodes to be able to group together and to know about each other. And that is the core of Acha Cluster. All other features of Acha Cluster are built on top of membership. Under the covers, Acha Cluster is implemented using heartbeats and gossip. So each node heartbeats to a subset of the other nodes, then information is inferred from that and then gossiped about. The gossip information includes which nodes have seen which other nodes and which nodes have seen the current state of gossip. You don't need to worry about this as a user of Acker Cluster. The interface that you get is that you can ask for the current state of the cluster or alternatively, you can subscribe to updates. So you can be told when nodes join and leave the cluster. The exciting parts of Acker Cluster are actually the things built on top of the core. We've got distributed data. This is a way of spreading information around the cluster and keeping it in memory. And when you read and write this data, you get to pick a consistency level. You can have an acknowledgement when only the local node has acknowledged the right, or you could ask for all nodes or a quorum. We've also got PubSub, so you can have topics within a cluster. We've also got features which offer a high level of consistency. Within a cluster, you can have a single instance of something running, a singleton. Messages from any node in the cluster are transparently routed to singletons. On top of that, we have sharding. Sharding is where you have one actor running per entity. So if you have sessions or users or devices, a cluster would allocate those actors across all of the nodes in the cluster. And regardless of which node you're on, messages will be transparently routed to the node hosting the entity for the given user or the given device. All of those features, which offer a high level of consistency, rely on knowing which nodes are up and which nodes are down. If we're running a singleton on a node and we lose connectivity to that node, we need to know whether that node has crashed and will never come back, or it's just overloaded, or there's a brief network partition. Part of our cluster is a failure detector, and it's the failure detector's job to monitor the heartbeats, monitor the latency between nodes, and then decide whether a node is unreachable. Up on top of failure detector, we have something else called a downing provider, and that decides whether the node is ever going to come back or not. Once the downing provider says that that node is gone, then we can move singletons away from that node, and we can move entities in our cluster sharding away from that node. Note that it's only features that provide a high level of consistency that need to make this distinction. Things like PubSub and distributed data continue to work even if nodes are marked as unreachable. Even features like cluster sharding and cluster singleton, for all of the entities or the singletons running on the other nodes, those things will continue to work. It's only about the safety mechanism of when to move things from nodes that have been marked as unreachable. Up until recently, it was the user's responsibility to implement a downing provider. You either had to buy one from Lightbend, evaluate the open source ones, or build your own. One thing I'm very excited about is that Acker, the Acker Split Brain Resolver, which used to be for Lightbend customers, has now been added to open source. This is a downing provider that has been battle tested by Lightbend's customers for many years in all sorts of environments. Now that this Split Brain Resolver is part of open source Acker Cluster, it opens the door for everybody, all open source users, to use Acker Cluster with confidence, even if they're using features like Singleton 
and sharding. Before that, you had to stick to features like distributed data and PubSub until you put an appropriate downing provider in. That's all we've got time for for now. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of the pros and cons of building stateful versus stateless applications. To see the true power of Acker Cluster, now within a downing provider that has been battle tested for years by Lightbend's customers, I suggest you go and have a look at some of the really cool features of Acker Cluster, like sharding, distributed data, singletons, and I'll include some links below for some videos that detail those topics. Thanks for listening.